In computability theory, the Ackermann function, named after Wilhelm Ackermann, is one of the simplest and earliest discovered examples of a total computable function that is not primitive recursive. All primitive recursive functions are total and computable, but the Ackermann function illustrates that not all total computable functions are primitive recursive. After Ackermann's publication of his function, many authors modified it to suit various purposes so that today, the Ackermann function may refer to any of numerous variants of the original function. One common version, the two-argument ackermann petter function, is defined as follows for non-negative integers m and n. Its value grows rapidly, even for small inputs. For example, a is an integer of 19,729 decimal digits. History in the late 1920s, the mathematicians Gabriel Sudan and Wilhelm Ackermann, students of David Hilbert, were studying the foundations of computation. Both Sudan and Ackermann are credited with discovering total computable functions that are not primitive recursive. Sudan published the lesser-known Sudan function, then shortly afterwards and independently. In 1928, Ackermann published his function. Ackermann's three-argument function is defined such that for p equals 0, 1, 2, it reproduces the basic operations of addition, multiplication, and exponentiation as and for p greater than 2 it extends these basic operations in a way that can be compared to the hyperoperation in On the Infinite, David Hilbert hypothesized that the Ackermann function was not primitive recursive, but it was Ackermann, Hilbert's personal secretary and former student, who actually proved the hypothesis in his paper on Hilbert's construction of the real numbers. Rojar Petter and Raphael Robinson later developed a two-variable version of the Ackermann function that became preferred by many authors. Definition and Properties Ackermann's original three-argument function is defined recursively as follows for non-negative integers m, n, and p. Of the various two-argument versions, the one developed by Petter and Robinson is defined for non-negative integers m and n as follows. It may not be immediately obvious that the evaluation of always terminates. However, the recursion is bounded because in each recursive application either m decreases or m remains the same in n decreases. Each time that n reaches 0, m decreases, so m eventually reaches 0 as well. Decreases in the lexicographic order on pairs, which is a well ordering. Just like the ordering of single non-negative integers, this means one cannot go down in the ordering infinitely many times in succession. However, when m decreases there is no upper bound on how much n can increase, and it will often increase greatly. The Petter-Ackermann function can also be expressed in terms of various other versions of the Ackermann function. The indexed version of Nuth Suparo notation. The part of the definition A equals A corresponds to hyperoperators. Conway chain arrow notation. For hence for equals minus 1 and A equals 1, which could logically be added for small values of M like 1, 2, or 3. The Ackermann function grows relatively slowly with respect to N. For M4, however, it grows much more quickly, even A is about 2 times 1,019,728, and the decimal expansion of A is very large by any typical measure. Logician Harvey Friedman defines a version of the Ackermann function as follows. For n equals 0, a equals 1. For m equals 1, a equals 2n. Else, a equals a. He also defines a single argument version a equals a. A single argument version a equals a that increases both m and n at the same time dwarfs every primitive recursive function, including very fast-growing functions such as the exponential function, the factorial function, multi- and superfactorial functions and even functions defined using the Suparo notation. It can be seen that A is roughly comparable to f omega in the fast-growing hierarchy. 
This extreme growth can be exploited to show that f, which is obviously computable on a machine with infinite memory such as a Turing machine and so is a computable function, grows faster than any primitive recursive function and is therefore not primitive recursive. In a category with exponentials, using the isomorphism, the Ackermann function may be defined via primitive recursion over higher-order functionals as follows where SUCC is the usual successor function and ITER is defined by primitive recursion as well. One interesting aspect of the Ackermann function is that the only arithmetic operations it ever uses are addition and subtraction of one. Its properties come solely from the power of unlimited recursion. This also implies that its running time is at least proportional to its output and so is also extremely huge. In actuality, for most cases the running time is far larger than the output. See below. Table of values. Computing the Ackermann function can be restated in terms of an infinite table. We place the natural numbers along the top row. To determine a number in the table, take the number immediately to the left, then look up the required number in the previous row, at the position given by the number just taken. If there is no number to its left, simply look at the column headed 1 in the previous row. Here is a small upper left portion of the table. The numbers here which are only expressed with recursive exponentiation or nth arrows are very large and would take up too much space to notate in plain decimal digits. Despite the large values occurring in this early section of the table, some even larger numbers have been defined, such as Graham's number, which cannot be written with any small number of nth arrows. This number is constructed with a technique similar to applying the Ackermann function to itself recursively. This is a repeat of the above table, but with the values replaced by the relevant expression from the function definition to show the pattern clearly. Expansion To see how the Ackermann function grows so quickly, it helps to expand out some simple expressions using the rules in the original definition. For example, we can fully evaluate in the following way. To demonstrate how S computation results in many steps and in a large number, inverse. Since the function f equals a considered above grows very rapidly, its inverse function f minus 1 grows very slowly. This inverse Ackermann function f minus 1 is usually denoted by alpha. In fact, alpha is less than 5 for any practical input size n. Since a is on the order of, this inverse appears in the time complexity of some algorithms such as the disjoint set data structure and Chazel's algorithm for minimum spanning trees. Sometimes Ackermann's original function or other variations are used in these settings, but they all grow at similarly high rates. In particular, some modified functions simplify the expression by eliminating the minus 3 in similar terms. A two-parameter variation of the inverse Ackermann function can be defined as follows. Where is the floor function? This function arises in more precise analyses of the algorithms mentioned above, and gives a more refined time bound. In the disjoint set data structure, m represents the number of operations while n represents the number of elements. In the minimum spanning tree algorithm, m represents the number of edges while n represents the number of vertices. Several slightly different definitions of alpha exist, for example, log 2n is sometimes replaced by n, and the floor function is sometimes replaced by a ceiling. Other studies might define an inverse function of 1 where m is set to a constant, such that the inverse applies to a particular row. Users benchmark the Ackermann function, due to its definition in terms of extremely deep recursion can be used as a benchmark of a compiler's ability to optimize recursion. The first use of Ackermann's function in this way was by YNGVE Sunblood, the Ackermann function, a theoretical, computational and formula manipulative study. This seminal paper was taken up by Brian Wichman in a trilogy of papers written between 1975 and 1982.